hello and welcome to another SY Diagnostics video and in today's video I'm not actually going to be fixing a car I'm going to be doing a product review this is what I've been sent um, so I'll get it opened in a second as you guys probably know I'm not one for really doing uh, product reviews or getting sent freebies a lot of the stuff I am offered I don't feel I can do justice to them because they're probably not as good as the items that I currently use whereas the item in this box is something that I can use on my own car and so it has been sent to me by a company called car ABC I'll put a link to their Amazon store in the description and on the screen right now uh, so without further ado let's get it opened up let me show you what's inside and let's go get it fitted so what we have in the box is an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto kit for my own vehicle which is a Mazda CX-3 uh, 2019 and the company have kindly sent me this kit so in there we've got um, we've got the little USB port and the um, slot for the SD card for the navigation so that requires replacing we've also got two cables within the kit a slack handful of cable ties some insulation uh, foam sticky pads I think there's quite a few of those and also a little instruction booklet so let's get the instruction booklet read They've also kindly sent me a couple of links to other videos that people have done. So I'm going to watch the videos, um, see what's required in stripping the panels out and the taking the screen out in order to fit this kit and see as well whether the firmware on my head unit is up to the required levels. If it's not, they've also provided me the information on how to update the firmware. So let's go to the car. Okay guys, um, before you actually even fit this kit, you need to know that the firmware of your audio unit is at the uh, desired level, which is a minimum of version 70. The company that has supplied this kit do um, supply firmware and comprehensive instructions on how to do it. There are also quite a few tutorials here on YouTube. But what you need to do to check, you need to go to the home screen on your display and then go to settings and then you scroll to system and go down to where it says about click on there go to version information and there it is it's at version 70.00.100 I do believe there is a newer version out um, but this is sufficient enough to run the Android Auto Apple CarPlay system so let's go get it fitted okay so now we're inside the car and what we need to do is replace this little power unit here this is the USB ports and it's also got the SD card uh, for the navigation so we need to be taking this out in order to do this according to the videos uh, both these side panels have to come out also the trim around the gear lever this little cover here um, and then I think what it does it accesses a couple of screws and we can lift the trim out so this panel comes out allegedly with a little bit of force you just lift it out on both sides uh, beforehand you have to take um, this little trim out as well and then we just lift this panel out so let's go and get that done okay so starting from this end it just lifts up there we go and that just pops straight out it's just held on with some little pushing clips all the way down so I'll go around to the other side now and do this one so there you go comes off relatively easy and that then exposes a screw here and a screw here which we need to take out I think I also need to possibly take this trim out and maybe this cover as well so I'll just go. that just pulls straight out we can just move it back there's enough cable there 
to uh, leave it in position. Sorry for knocking the camera then. And we can now just take this trim out, I believe, and then this cover and the two screws. And the gear lever surround just lifts up out of four clips to either side. One here and one here, and obviously the same on the other side. I can just pop it back into fourth gear there, move it out of the way. And then I think this trim, how does this come out? Just slides out like that and now we can access the clips on the back of this and push this out so here's the new unit and what I need what I need to do is if you can see there's tabs on the top here and also on the bottom so I need to depress these tabs down, possibly with a screwdriver, and then it'll just release it and it should come out then uh, in order so I can unplug it from the back and uh, fit the new one. So let's give that a go. Okay, so that was a little bit fiddly, but we've managed to get that out. So I'll pull it out, disconnect the connections on the back, and then we'll uh, remove the glove box and take the screen out to feed the wires through. The unit unplugs with just some multi-plugs and you just push the little tabs down and pull the connections out. On the old one there is only two connectors there and on the new one we've got uh, four connectors now. Maybe that's just one multi-plug, I don't know without, look without looking at the new harness. The glove box just hinges down, you push the sides in either side and then it just pops out of these little hinges here so there's no screws or anything to do there. So the next job after taking the glove box out is to remove the screen. Uh, there's a cover on the front here, also a cover on the back here and then I believe it's held in with two bolts, I believe there are 10 millimeter headed bolts and then the unit will just lift out. Okay, so as to not cause any damage to the dashboard, I've just put a load of masking tape around it. Unfortunately, it doesn't stick because there's some sort of silicon or cleaning product that's been put on the dashboard at some point, so it won't stick. However, just with a screwdriver, I managed to lever up this trim here. That exposes two 10mm headed bolts, which I'll undo next. And then that leaves us with a trim at the back, which I'll also uh, lever out with a small screwdriver as well. So let's put them down safely and take the trim off at the back. Okay, so my masking tape managed to blow off in the wind. I've got the trim out, it's a little bit tight, but I just parted it down this side and this side and lifted it out. So now we can lift out this unit. I was going to get okay, so the unit itself just um slots forward and up it's enough then to expose the plugs at the back so let's go get the harness now the new harness see where it plugs in okay so according to the instructions what it looks like you have to do is unplug one connector of the original harness and replace it with another one and then obviously there is a, a separate harness as well so we've now got two cables of the hat or two harnesses that we need to just tape up insulate from uh, rattling and probably in classic tradition they're going to be about six foot too long uh, root them down neatly and connect them into the back of the new um, USB hub right so we've got the cables all rooted in just loosely hanging at the moment because I'm going to give it a dry run before I box it all back up two plugs into the back of the new unit this plug um, is the one that we've unplugged and left on the back of the uh, display screen 
it doesn't appear to fit in its socket here but if it is the same wire that's connected to the back of the uh, display screen then I've disconnected it so it's redundant anyway so fingers crossed on that one uh, it'll be interesting to see as well I've seen on a few comments on other people's videos that pump, some people do say that the original navigation doesn't work after fitting this kit and also some people have also asked whilst it's on Android Auto or Apple CarPlay does the reversing camera still work okay so we've got it all loosely fitted I've just fitted the screen back in just pop the trim back in and realized I maybe ought to uh, test it first so we've got the USB connected into the correct uh, USB port I'm just gonna plug it into my phone now the phone has just buzzed it's sparked into life so straight away the uh, Android Auto has come up it's showing the map also shows where I live so I'm just gonna pixelate that out so let's have a play around with it never really used this for quite a while so if I press on the bottom right hand corner there um, right so we've got all the things there of the basically mirroring my phone we can go to Spotify we've got WhatsApp which I'm not going to show because that's personal messages as to is messenger uh, got a Mazda icon there so let's press that what does that do I see yep that takes us back to the um, radio station so if I press the home screen go back to entertainment USB 1 is Android Auto okay I get this so that's taken us straight there to Spotify uh, let's have a look around Spotify so yeah that's the home screen for Spotify let's see let's see what we can fetch up I'm not gonna pull put the volume up too long because of copyright so yeah that's working okay and I'm presuming we can track forward yep it's gonna probably take a little bit of getting used to this is so what else have we got so if I go across to that side then obviously we've got the voice control of Google can make a telephone call and we've got Google Maps so yeah so it's all working perfectly okay uh, a couple of people have also said whilst this has been fitted that they've lost the factory navigation so let's just go back down to the bottom right back to Mazda and if I press the navigation button on my controller then that is showing uh, the navigation map as Mazda is intended it to be also a few people have said as well that the reversing camera doesn't work um, whilst it's on Android Auto or um, Apple CarPlay so let's get it back onto Android Auto um, so it's playing a song I'm just going to start the engine up the steering wheel just moved a little bit there so I apologize for that okay so starting that up has lost the Android Auto so if I just unplug it plug it back in So that's the Android Auto back on and I'll pop it into reverse and we can see the little spider that's uh, having a panic attack in the wind but the reversing camera does work. So that's Android Auto fitted onto a Mazda CX-3 courtesy of Car ABC and thanks for watching.